Hey everyone, Joey here. And today we're going to do a setup guide for APS3E, which is a PS3 emulator on Android. Starting off with a huge disclaimer. PS3 emulation on Android is still in its very early days. This is all alpha. Things don't work. Things break. You will have crashes. And not every game works. All of it. But you can have a decent time with some games if you plan to fiddle around and try out a few. So today, everything you see is going to be on my AYN Odin 3, which is a Snapdragon 8 Elite device. It does great for PS3, for the games that work, and I would probably suggest, if you're going to do today's guide, you would want a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 device or better. Also, you're not going to need a PC for any part of today's guide. So, the very first thing you're going to need to do before we do anything is get actual PS3 games. There's two options for you. Decrypted ISOs, which is the easiest to find and what I would recommend. And if you want to do so, just type in PS3 ROMs in Google and, and you'll find it. There's a certain fun place that has them. Or there is PKG files instead. Now, PKG is a bit harder to find, but there are some games that only come with PKG and RAP files, so just be aware of that. As of right now, folders do not work in APS3E. So, you can just download all this stuff right on your device, you don't need a PC for any of it. And what you want to do is just create a ROMs folder on your device, or if you're using an SD card, you can throw it there. Then just create a PS3 folder inside of it and then put all of your games inside of that PS3 folder. It's nice and easy, it'll keep things organized, and it just makes it simple for you. The only other thing we need is PS3 firmware, which thankfully, Sony hosts right on their website. So, check the link in the description, and then head to it, and then scroll down to Download PS3 Update, which you're going to find under Update Using a Computer. You can try clicking this, it might not download depending on your browser, and I usually have to tap and hold and then click open a new tab to get the download to start. Let's go ahead and start by downloading APS3E and you have two options. The easiest is right off of the Google Play Store, which is what I'm going to do, or you can grab the download from their GitHub. There is no right or wrong answer, but the Play Store does make it easy because it keeps things up to date. The first thing that the emulator wants from us is that PS3 firmware that we just downloaded. So click select firmware, and mine was easy, it's right in the recents. But it should be in your downloads folder, and it'll be named ps3updat.pup. Select it and then go ahead and click next step. Now it's asking to choose the folder that has our ISOs, which is our PS3 games. So if you followed my advice earlier, you can click set ISO directory, Go to the ROMs folder that you created, PS3 folder, and select it. If you happen to have PKG files instead, you can skip this step. Either way, click next step when done. Next up, it's asking if we want to use a custom font file or not. And for this, we just want to use the firmware fonts. So click from firmware and then next step. For those of you with a Snapdragon device, there are things called custom drivers that can improve the performance of games. I'll leave a link in the description of a site that has them. This can be tricky and it's a complicated subject as there's a lot of custom drivers and it all depends on the device you have. Long story short, if you know you have it, go ahead and click add custom driver and select it. My device doesn't have it, so I'm going to uncheck the box and then click next step. We are now at the main home screen and you can see it found my games and I only have three games for today's guide. If you choose the three dots top right, you can install your PKG files if that's the format your games came in, you can change the ISO directory if maybe you moved your games, and so on. There's options here. Let's take a look at some suggested settings, so go ahead and click the settings wrench top right. Head into core. Now for PPU threads, you can if you want use more threads. Basically, you want this number to be half of the cores that your processor has. So, for a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, or 8 Elite device, like the device I'm using, it has 8 cores, and so I'm going to set this to 4. You might run into instability, and you might have to lower it back to 3 or to 2. Either way, just Google how many cores your processor has, set it to half, and then test as you go. 
back out and into video. Make sure renderer is set to Vulkan, which it is. We're gonna leave the resolution at 1280 by 720 because PS3 is hard enough to run as it is right now. For frame limit, I like to set this to PS3 native. So it actually keeps the frame limit of the games. On auto, this seems to super speed some games for some reason. Scroll down and there is two settings to enable. Right color buffers and right depth buffer. You're gonna notice right color buffers is grayed out for me. And if this is the case for you as well, all you have to do is scroll down to use BGRA format and make sure that you select it. Then scroll back up and you should be able to enable the setting now. Last setting, scroll down to VSync and turn it on so we don't get any mismatched frames. Scroll all the way down to performance overlay and if you want to see the performance overlay in games, enable the first three boxes. That is really all there is to it right now. Unfortunately, as of right now, APS3E doesn't have any control mappings. So you're gonna have to kind of hope that your device is recognized in game. I would suggest if your device can do it, change to the control scheme for Xbox layout. So the buttons are in the right spot. So for an AYN or Retroid device, just swipe down from the top, change the controller style to Xbox, then close and relaunch APS3E. Go ahead and launch a game by selecting it in the list. And it's gonna take some time to compile for what it needs to. Some games can and will take a very long time for this, so just be aware. The on-screen touch controls will disappear after a few seconds of not tapping the screen. Once you're finally in, you're in. There is an overlay on the left if you turned it on to see the performance and you can just play the game. To exit, if your device has a back button, push that, or swipe up and hit the back arrow, then quit, or the back gesture if you're using gestures. If you want to do per game settings, just push and hold on the game and then you can adjust the per game settings here and it'll only apply to that specific game. Now, if you're curious where all the data is and the folders, this is going to be dependent on your device because some devices can't access Android's data storage without root. But for AYN and Retroid devices, you can go into your file manager, Android, data, aenu.aps3e, files, aps3e, and config. And this is gonna match the PC version of RPCS3's folder structure. So your games, if you install them, are in dev underscore hdd0 in the game folder. The home folder has your saves and DLC, and there's config and patches and all that sort of thing. That should be just about it for today. We went over everything and anything that I could personally think of, and you should be able to do anything that you want in APS3E now using today's guide and the different timestamps. Like I said before, it is a very early and alpha emulator. Expect a lot of issues, a lot of crashes, and so on. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow. Come join me on the Discord to talk all about retro handhelds. Support me through YouTube membership if you like my stuff. And hope you all have a good one.